And I am here with, um, with Daniel Ricketts and Hemda, and um, we are talking today about the power of music in education, and, um, and I'm just really uh, pleased I'll be letting in uh, those of you who join us online uh, anytime, and I need to uh, set my, get into things, okay, there we go, good, I was looking at a delay of myself, so that's Okay, so um, Daniel, if you could uh, introduce yourself, and uh, and I am letting people in. <laughs> Great, yeah, my name is Daniel, as Karen said, and I was an elementary school teacher for a number of years in Iowa, where I got to teach third grade for a couple of years and fifth grade as well, and that just kind of took me off into the educational realm in different ways, where I have taught kids in schools and churches and private schools and uh, that's where I am today where I'm just uh, putting songs out there for uh, many different kids also internationally so it's been really exciting for me to do and I hope I get to do it for many more years for sure. So. Tell us a little bit about um, about your I don't know where to start I'm so excited to, to, to get you on live. Um, why don't we go back to your um, student teaching days and how you incorporated music in, in, in the classroom. Yeah, definitely. So I was teaching in this uh, middle school called Goodrill Middle School. It was sixth graders. And, uh, and they're, they're great kids. A lot of them were kind of tuned, tuned out for, you know, at least what I have, had observed. And I remember I was, I was assigned to, to teach the kids helping verbs. And I didn't really know how to teach them helping verbs in a, in a cool way. Helping verbs can be kind of boring, uh, kind of boring if you, if you, you know, do it the wrong way. And so I was like, you know what? I play guitar, I sing, maybe let's just, let's just make a little song. And so I made a little song um, that actually I've got a guitar here. So it kind of went like this, it went, um, have, has, had, do, does, did me might must should could would and it went on from there and i remember for me i was like yeah this this will be okay maybe they'll think it's kind of fun or whatever but when i started playing and singing the song like the eyes just got really wide and people were like stunned like they had never heard anything like that before and i had instant rapport with the kids number one and there was an energy that was not there that was there after I did it in their hearts where they're just like, they were jazzed about learning and they learned helping verbs like in a day because they were so excited just to sing the song. And so that turned, that, that turned my whole perspective, that changed my perspective on, I just kind of thought music could just be like the icing on the cake for uh, kids learning like it could be just a little fun thing on the side but then I realized whoa there's actually a real power uh, music is a real real untapped gift um, for most teachers uh, because it, I, I just realized how powerful it was where it, it music is relational I found out on that very first day I was like whoa I have rapport with these kids now and I didn't have this before and our relationship got way better after that and so yeah, that's kind of what how it started. And then when I got a job at Gilbert Elementary School in, in Iowa, it's close to Ames, Iowa, close to Iowa State University, um, I took it more seriously with the kids and that we, we began to um, not only, I didn't only just create music myself for the kids, but I found that getting them involved and them helping me uh, create the songs, that was incredible. Cause then we're, we're doing something together they're taking ownership with it and we're making the song together. And then we would put it on, uh, this will date me a little, but we put it on CDs and uh, they would, they would make the album covers and they would, you know, spice them up and everything. And they're like, this is our own album, man. This is cool. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I could see them during when they're taking tests or like their heads are bobbing up and down because they're singing the songs inside of their head. And so, um, so that's kind of where it all took off for me and, and realized this is really, and valuable and it's it's also something that's not just not just to 
learn for a test, but actually to change their perspective on what they're learning. That was probably like one of the biggest things for me. I realized that if you think about a helping verb, it can be very, um, I don't know, just stoic or so, you know, there's no life on it. You put a song to it, they're going to see helping verbs in a completely different way. Or if you're going to sing about like something like an ecosystem, uh, you know, ecosystems are outside, they're everywhere. They're, they're, they have living things, non-living things, and, and even dead things. They all are together in these ecosystems. But there's nothing, sometimes you can't understand the wonder of creation until you sing about it. Because singing, I just feel like we're, we're designed, whatever comes out of our mouth when we sing, it changes us. It, it's, uh, it, um, if you say a sentence and then you sing the sentence, there, it's a very different response that people get from that. Um, they've even done studies that if you were to say something, um, they'll, you know, people will believe it's true, but if you sing it, they will most always believe it is true. <laughs> so there's just such a power in music that I learned um, from, a, from an early time in um, being a teacher. And so, and I'm still growing, still learning. Kids are, are ch changing and the music that they they're listen to is changing. So I'm always loving to learn and to see how we can tap into kids' hearts and to show them the joy of learning through music. Well, thank you. Um, let's, let's um, well, skip to when we started working together and, um, and I had um, uh, these phonograms of, you know, the, all the phonograms in the English language. And I knew that unconditionally, every time they would see, say, and write, the, the the letters and the sounds that would go into their their memory and um and it had a little bit of a rhyme to it and a little bit of a rhythm but um it wasn't it wasn't fun for me <laughs> and I don't think it was that much fun for the kids like they saw the fruit in it and they're like oh I can you know I couldn't read and now I can read but um when you when you put it to music it was it was a whole nother story yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I realized that, um, r rhythm is a big deal for kids in, in learning that there's actually something comforting about a rhythm. It's, it's ongoing. It continues to go and there's a soothingness about it. And so, um, and the cool thing about, uh, certain kinds of genres of music like rap, uh, rap is great for phonics because you are saying the words sometimes when you're singing a word and you want them to learn exactly how to say the word, you don't want to sing it long and drawn out. Like if I say animals, well, some kids might think that animal is, is supposed to be said animal. So you want to, so rap was perfect because we could go animals, animals, or whatever word it is, we could literally just say it. And so we found a great way to communicate phonics is through rap. And also with rhythm, people move their bodies with rhythm. I mean, they're just grooving. And so that multi-sensory approach, just like what Karen is saying, is kids, they, they learn best if, if, they're, if they're doing something with their bodies, if they're saying it, if they're engaging, if they're singing it, saying it, writing it, doing all those things. The easiest way to do that is through music. I mean, it's like uh, the cookies are so low, you can just grab them. You know, it's just a very easy way to teach kids um, how to learn. And so, yeah, we found that kids would groove to the music and they would, it would ignite a lot of their senses at once, which was really, really potent for, for kids. Well, and I would hear, I, um, I mean, well, I just have to, to do a little promo for you, but you're, you're so incredibly um, gifted and you have this theater and improv, you know, background and, and you had written and we had the kids had had listened to the songs and they were learning and and they got really involved in it they're like hey you know this part's too slow and this part's too fast and what happened to this funny part when you made you know this funny voice and and uh so they, they there was a lot of ownership in, in the process but what really um impacted me was to hear a high school student who um was diagnosed dyslexic um, he was after, um, you know, therapy and, and doing the full program with me and, um, and you know, doing the, 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 the phonograms to the, to the rap. We called it reading, writing, rapping. 
um, I asked Daniel to, to put an encouraging word, you know, at the end of, of the songs. And we took something, 70 phonograms. We, we ended up breaking it up into um, smaller bite-sized pieces. And, um, and he had struggled because he, he could read above grade level with me one-on-one -on -one in my room even, but he didn't believe in himself. He didn't have the, um, to walk outside of my room. Yep. And, and do it. And, uh, and for him, he thought that everybody in his science class was smarter than him. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and then he's like, well, I will, well, how do you know that? Well, the girls, they always ask the, the questions, the, like really smart questions. And I opened up the science book to the end of the chapter to the review questions. I'm like, these questions right here, like the girls are just trying to get the answers from the teacher for the test that's coming up. So yes, they're smart, but <laughs> when the teacher came to me and said that you were the only one that wrote this essay and really understood this, the science concept, that's another kind of intelligence. They have like intelligence and in how to study and, and, and do well in school, but you actually understand science concepts. So he takes his first science test but, um, after that conversation, because he failed the other one, but did really well on that essay question, takes his first science test, and I can hear him singing the end of one of your songs. Um, I think, it, I, I can't remember now. Do you remember any of the encouragement? Um, oh, gosh. Um, you're doing so good. Uh, that's it. I'm so proud of you. You're doing what you can do. Good job. No, 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 no. Yes, it had a little, a little groove to it. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, the, the first time I had gone into a home and done tutoring, everybody was walking around the house singing, no, 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 no. And then the kids I was working with were like, I just got that out of my head. And then somebody else would walk in and go, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It just sticks. It just sticks and it's fun. It feels good. And, yeah. and we really, our brains don't learn when we're stressed. Yes. And so to, for, to be joyful, to be playful, and to learn uh, in, in play and in joy is, is really optimal. Yes, yes. And if you're being tested, it, when, you're, when you're feeling stressed and you're being quizzed all the time, you know, that's what it feels like if you're doing a lecture class and... And you're yeah. getting asked questions and you have that pressure it, it's not it, you're not going to be able to use that information yes. you know it doesn't it doesn't stick that's 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 so right and and you know you realize that to or in order to open up those areas of joy sometimes you need music and and uh some people i think people have a lot of people have never equated that joy and learning are supposed to be married together like that there's you know the things in our universe and our world are just so amazing. There is like an awe about them. And so when we learn, learning is supposed to be tied to joy and wonder. And so music is a way to open that up. And, and, it, and like what Karen was saying about the, this, this student, it was a confidence builder for him. It, uh, there's a lot of kids, you know, a, a normal student who does okay, they're gonna like music, but sometimes there's gonna be th those three or four that in a regular direct direct instruction class where the teacher's just talking and they're trying to listen, but they don't learn that way. And when you be when you present with them with a song, they go, wait a second, I get this. I can sing this. It gives them, when they can sing a song with the rest of the class, it gives them confidence and a sense of belonging with the rest of the class that they didn't have before. And it turns them on. And you know, and sometimes it's not always just music. I remember throwing a football. With, with a kid who was an athlete. And that was the only way that I could relate to him uh, doing his math facts because he was always in his head condemning himself thinking he was dumb. And I realized if I would throw the football with him and he'd catch it, he'd get his mind off of how he, how, you know, how he didn't think he was smart. And then he, I was like, whoa, you, your brain's great, man. You do a good job. Let's, let's keep throwing the football and learning these facts. And music's the same way where, where you can present a song to somebody and they may have been tuned out in every other way, but man, they, they, they tune in to music. And so it is a way to build people's confidence. Um, and yeah, that's why I want to continue to use it. 
So let's jump to right now and to um, Daniel Ricketts, the international singer songwriter. Share with us a little bit about your 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 Poland project. Yeah. Um, so I there's an educational co company in Poland. Don't ask me to pronounce it because it is in Polish and uh, the language is the the gap is very big for me. So, uh, but they're they're very great and like wonderfully aggressive in getting the, the word out to try to get preschoolers to learn the English language. And so one of their goals, one of the departments of their, their company is uh, to teach, to equip teachers to help teachers teach preschoolers the English language. And so one of the ways they're doing it is through conversational English, um, not, not through like, just like, you know, this is a hat and then putting hat. Instead of saying that, they're just gonna say, hey, let's sing a song about wearing a hat, you know, and going to the store or going to the post office or whatever. And so they asked me to create uh, 10 music videos about just singing about normal things in the English language. So like one of the songs is called Jobs and there's so many jobs you can do for me and you. Uh, and I sing about, about uh, you know, what does a builder do? What does a school teacher do? Um, what do these people do? And, and I don't say a whole, whole lot because they're just learning basic words. So yeah, so I'm learning, I'm, or I'm having fun uh, getting these songs done and by this fall, they'll all be done and excited to see kids uh, sing the English language through some fun songs. Yes, yes. And I think um, I was uh, talking with, with Diane the other day about um, speech and, and language. And a lot of times, you know, there's the focus is on articulation, which yeah. songs, you know, help. But um, even more is that language piece. So for you to put together basic language um, with a song and with a video so they can see and they connect, yeah. that really embeds that into their into their long term memory. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, even not just with the Polish thing, I, you know, I've done some multiplication raps and things like that. And, and I realized like when I, when I say a rap or, or I sing about I, an object, um, let's say six times four is 24. So don't shut the door because there's a lot more. And now there's a door in their memory. And I've realized when you're singing about things, I, to sing about things that are very concrete, things that you can touch, you can see. And, um, and that's why a lot of our phonic songs, we're talking about things that you can touch and see like Z, zebra, that kind of a thing. Sometimes uh, you, we have to get abstract, but so I realized in, in, in my songs, if I, can, if I can paint a picture in their mind through the song, they're not gonna forget it. And, and you'll notice like, you know, if you think about those of you who are listening right now, what are, what are your favorite songs? Where does it take you? Does it make you Im imagine something or, or when they, you know, they, the best songwriters, they will, they will paint a picture or they will tell a story and they will take you in that story. And so that's, that's our goal and, and creating songs is, is to bring people in to the things that you want the things you want them to learn, but through things that they can see or experience so they can associate those awesome experiences with what they're learning. Right. And it, it's, it's different parts of, of the brain, that motion and the, the music is, so for those kids that, um, let me let me share real quick. I'm gonna, it's gonna be messy, but I'm gonna share um, <laughs> a uh, something that, that I do. Oh, my computer reconfigured and so I'm gonna have to find it. <laughs> so um, it is uh, what I call a, uh, an at genius map. Uh, it's a, my proprietary process, um, and let's see. Oh, and when my computer shut down, it went into document recovery. Sorry, everybody. But, um, but there are, here we go. So uh, what I did for this family is I took the, um, I'm going to get the pen out, and um, so when I'm doing a, a full testing package, I look at um, these ten, these ten skills: vocabulary, visual discrimination, grammar and memory, order recall, storytelling, drawing from memory, um, everyday fact knowledge, 
uh, visual reasoning, repeating words, and organizing meaningful segments. And a group of doctors decided that those were really good skills that predict classroom success. And then Dr. Case, the doctor that I worked with, said, well, if we can, if we can predict classroom success with these skills, then why not teach these skills? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I, I have curriculum and I have everything set up to, to lay down tracks in the brain, neurological tracks in the brain so the kids can process and, and process at a quicker speed. And but the one that I can't do, um, I can lay tracks all around it, but actually remembering random facts. You know, like what planet is um, is closest to the sun? And um, do you remember that song that you wrote? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, yeah, I do. You want me to play it? Yeah. Let me see. Um... Yeah, it's, uh... man, I had, I don't think I knew the solar system order until I sang this song. <laughs> I know, when I was giving the test, I didn't have the answers in front of me, and I was having a, I had, was having one of those days where, I didn't have sleep and I didn't have the right nutrition. And so my, my brain was a little bit foggy and I caught myself singing. I don't, I didn't memorize your song. I only heard it like once or twice, but I caught myself singing it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. it's so go ahead and sing it with us. Yeah, it goes like this, it goes. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Venus, Earth, and Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, solar system, I don't want to miss them, all of those planets around the sun, solar system, I don't really want to miss them, the planets around your sun, the planets around the sun. Something like that. It's a, kind of a lower version, but usually gets a little higher than that. <laughs> I love that. I just love that. I think for um, adults, I mean, expect the a, a lot of the nursing students and the and the and the doctors, you know, have little mnemonic tools and um, oh, uh, would you mind me putting you on the on the spot, Rita? Sure. Was there Rita's a, a nurse? And um, was there a, like a mnemonic or a, a song that you would sing to help you remember muscle or tissue or bones or anything like that? Or did you just have one of those memories where you could just do it? Uh, sadly, we didn't have music as part of learning. Uh, so, but yeah, I used to just memorize cards and just repeat them over in my head. It, it, it wasn't the best way to do it, but. Yeah, I wish that we had had like some funny songs to sing. That I mean, that would be amazing. So, uh, and my point is, I'm, thank you, Rita, is that it, not just children and not just early childhood, but it's it's really a tool for for uh, you know creative people for not creative people. It's just really a a, a strong strategy and a, and a good tool. Yes. And, you know, and there are certain there are jobs I we used to live next to the Chrysler planet or planet plant. <laughs> and um, and he could this really intelligent uh, manager couldn't work his way up the, the pay scale because he couldn't he, he couldn't memorize to 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 take the, this test. And mm -hmm. um, so I did the things that I know to do as an educational therapist. But man, if you would have had a song, if we would have, you know, known the power of music in that. And like I said, nursing students, doctors, you know, uh, it, 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 it's just um, it's just a really strong tool and a, a strong strategy. And um, let's see, is there is there anything else that you're thinking the, that you want to share with us, Daniel? Me? Um Gosh, I don't think so. Uh, I just I just can't stress enough on how um, getting kids, getting people to a place of joy is such an important, important thing. And this is one of the best tools uh, out there to do that. And um, 
I don't think people really understand the the relationship between or uh, the, the the relationship part of it where you're actually with like sometimes when you're reading a book uh like I I would say I've been mentored by people through through books like through authors like there's certain authors that I feel like yeah this guy mentored me I don't know him but he mentored me because I read his book and I feel like I took little chunks of wisdom from from his book and that's very similar uh to me music is very similar to that that can be it can be a mentor um for kids it doesn't have to be live you don't have to call in the live musician you can literally turn on the mp3 uh you know somebody who who kind of understands this where they're they're actually taking the song there's there are people who just maybe without any life just try to create a tune and and put song words to the music and you know but but there's another whole part if you uh, take this and really think, okay, what is this content really about? How can I express that content best to a kid and pull them in? That That's when it gets really fun and you can bring them in in a whole new way. So but I think that's all I've got. I, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still a student of this. Um, I love it. I, the power of music and sound is uh, incredible. So I want to learn more. Well, I, the, the, the one example that always comes up is I remember a commercial from childhood, and I, I lived in Rockford, which was like an hour and a half out of Chicago. It, so it was a Chicago company, and uh, it was a carpet company, and I know their telephone number. 398-3650, I mean, this yep. is 45, I turned 60 a couple days ago. This is, you know, like 50 years ago, and I remember yep. that telephone number. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, that, that, and that's the crazy stuff. I mean, all of us, everyone listening, I know all of you uh, when you were, you know, 10, 12 years old, and maybe that was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, some of you 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you can still sing those songs. And that's the crazy part. I mean, there, some of you, a lot of, a lot of you guys are, the, are churchgoers. And so you might not remember the four points that your pastor gave but I know you'll remember the chorus from, from the worship leader. Like you will definitely remember the chorus. And, and that's, that's just the power of music. You're going to, you know, it's going to stick in your brain. And sometimes it can be annoying because you can't get a song out of your head, but that's, that's the good stuff. Uh, especially when you're learning, like, I'm glad I can't get it out of my head. That means I know it. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, the, um, in, in my book, um, the seven keys to, to reading readiness, I, um, there's certain neurological tracks or paths that you need in your brain to, to be successful, just like I showed in, in, in that uh, genius roadmap for that family. As I took those 10 areas and, for, and I laid it out as a family, I'll show you two real fast. I, um, uh, so I laid out as a family um, what tracks needed to be laid, what tracks were there they have some tracks that are already in the gifted range. Um, so the, the gold is gifted. So they had, uh, oh, that just put right through instead of a highlighter. So, you know, they have some kids that are in the gifted range in some areas. And then lots of, of, of kids that are lots of areas that are in the average or above average compared to kids their age. And then all the green is the areas that they need to, that each child needs to work on. And then as a family, I also did, um, I just, I did lead dominoes, the things that they, they need to work on as a, as a family um, that everybody needs to work on. And in fact, then I do uh, memory testing and, uh, and the same thing, kids that, that are in the average compared to other kids their age, kids that, um, uh, or, and some have gifted areas. And so I, we, you take the areas that are gifted and you and, and you build into into that, and you use those gifted uh, memory areas to pull up their their uh, weaker subject areas, and then yep. you work on. Well, what happens with music is it bypasses all of that. So, like I was saying, for I mean, I've been doing this for forty years, and that um, everyday fact knowledge I couldn't teach that, but they could learn a song and have yep. that in an instant. Yep. Definitely. And the um, so in my in my book, I actually um, have chapters on 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 those ten areas 
those 10 tracks that need to be laid for them to be successful. And one of the, the uh, first tracks um, is being able to repeat back. And so in, in my book, um, being able for preschool kindergartner to be able to repeat back, um, you know, 10 syllables is, is that's that's what's needed to, to for them to be successful in the, in the classroom. Well, they couldn't do it. And we um, I think it was two summers ago we did a camp. And um, and I don't think you were there that day, even though you wrote the song. And so I, I had the. Um, uh, and do you remember the song that you could sing it? Um, uh, the gift song? Yep, yep, the gift song. Yeah, you want me to sing that like, song? I'm just putting you on the spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Gift, I am a gift. Yep. I am a precious treasure. I have eyes. I have eyes that see and ears that hear. I am a gift. I am a precious treasure. I have eyes that see, ears that hear. Yep. And they, like that. yep. And the, um, so what happened was at camp to earn their first key, they had to be, be able to repeat back those words. And one at a time, the kids came to the mic and uh, we sang the song. I, I, you know, I taught them the words, they repeated after me. We went to the mic, but then they were to say all of them, them together. And some of the kids couldn't do it. And some were uh, like uh, afraid to, to try. And so like, their moms came up with them or a sibling came up with them. But the coolest thing happened the second day. The second day, all of these teenagers that were doing the, the music for the camp started spontaneously. A piano player, just like this classical version of what Daniel just did, he just came up with these chords and these things that I'd never heard with the song. It was so beautiful. I was so touched. I was crying. And the kids started um, coming up to the the platform and it had the microphone and they remembered the day before and it, what was incredible to me was the one the ones that couldn't do it before or couldn't do it without their mom or their or their sister came by themselves up to the mic and were able to say the entire all of the words and i could see because i was face to face with them and they had the microphone and it wasn't like it wasn't camp was done this was just a spontaneous, joyful time. And they came up and they're just like, and they looked me in the eyes and they're like, I'm a gift. I'm a mm. precious treasure. I have eyes that see and ears that hear. I'm a masterpiece created for good works. And I, I could see like breakthrough, you know, and confidence and joy and, and, and power, like like they were getting, like they're getting steel on the inside. Like they knew who they were. It was, it was such a wonderful, wonderful moment. Beautiful. And just thank you for for doing that, Daniel. Thank you for putting putting those hard things to music, and and giving kids a, a chance. Yeah. Well, it's fun to do. So. <laughs> Well, thanks I'm going to um, drop, go, were you going to say something yeah, more? Yeah, I was going to thanks, thanks for this time. This is, this is really fun. This is outstanding. I love what you're doing, Karen. I always have. And uh, you've got a wonderful, accurate, you've got an accuracy, a pinpointed accuracy for kids and what they need in these areas and how to learn. And so it's been fun to learn from you in all this. Well, thank you. I, I do want, um, we have a, a, a um, Hemda, who has her master's in music, and um, and I wanted her um, kind of quickly, when we first met, we met um, through one of my students who's on the, the, the autism spectrum. Um, her mom's like, you've got to meet Hemda, like you, you have to, like you guys are so connected, you have so much, you know, in, in common. And as we were sharing, I, I shared with uh, with Hemda the um, analogy about laying the rare, that one of my parents had said about laying instead of like uh, neurological pathways, and I'd always done that analogy of the pathway. The mom 
her, the dad is a um, railroad engineer. And, um, and she just came up with this analogy. It's like rain, laying railroad tracks. And in my, in my imagination, I saw like, oh my goodness, you know, like those, those accelerated trains in, 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 in Europe, you know, that go like 200 miles per hour. It's like, wow, if we lay the right tracks, you know, um, we learn through our, our five senses, seven senses, some say, um, you know, by, by what we see here, touch, taste, and, and feel that that reception that goes in it lays tracks and it gets organized in our memory and for some kids it it gets thrown in the junk drawer because it's all discombobulated it's all mixed up and especially for my kids that are what i call are 3d thinkers where they see in 3d they see in 5d they can feel they can touch they can move you can see that they're gifted in the way that they're responding to others and, and responding to different things but all of a sudden they get into a traditional classroom and and they're stuck and and that's where i go in and 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 the difference between what i do and 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 special education is that sometimes special education can put them in a box uh with with the ceiling and um and by doing that, that, that genius layout, that roadmap, and telling them what, compared to kids their age, what they're gifted in, and the areas that we need to work on, and the fact that I've worked with 2,500 kids, and there hasn't anyone that, that I haven't been able to teach, you know, like that gives them that confidence. And then you put it to music. I always have, um, let's see, let me share with you. I always have... I was digging and um, I always have music playing in my, um, in my background. And uh, let me share with you, let's see, sorry. <laughs> All right, so it, um, they're talking about noise pollution. And that the, for some kids, they can't screen out the background noises, but that there was different. And this is why I wanted to talk to Daniel and Hemda uh, about. Um, so they're talking about different. Uh, let's see, it says even relatively low levels of environmental noise have been proven to uh, negatively affect physical and intellectual performance. Designed to, uh, to mask irritating background noise, the innovative classical recordings in this um, program, which you have to get on eBay because it's no longer in existence, and sound help um, enhance health and well being by creating a therapeutic musical environment for work, rest, and play. And here's the fun part that I, I want my music people to, <laughs> to talk about is the, um, the tempo thing. Like, I first I first heard about this and I bought all the CDs and I put in relaxation. And there it says um, creative arrangements, classical master, master works to inspire profound relaxation. I did this to grown adults for a, uh, a progress report meeting. And so I put this relaxation thing on, didn't tell any, but I just had the, the music on. And pretty soon I am literally in my own conference dozing off. <laughs> and, and the people in the room are dozing off. So I'm like, hey, let's take a quick break and, uh, and I get a drink of water, walk around a bit. Like we're all embarrassed, right? And then I put in uh, my favorite ones, uh, music for concentration, music for learning and music for productivity. And um, what a difference. We were all upbeat. We were <laughs> going. So, and I, and so, um, and I'll, let's figure out how I can unmute. Um, let's see, there we go. Um, so I don't know the science behind it and with the neural uh, pathways, but there's something with that. When you say tempo, Dan, or when, uh, when you said the rhythm, is that, mm -hmm. the, is tempo the same thing? Yeah, rhythm. Um, tempo is like the how fast or slow. So if you want to faster, you'd say speed up the tempo. Uh, rhythm is just more of a general word for for all of it, anything that has a beat. Um, okay. Yeah. So where it says 60, 40 to 60 BPM, that just means 40 to 60 beats per minute. So that's going to be actually pretty, 
all these are actually pretty slow, which would make sense if they're for de-stress and relaxing and for thinking and concentration, you're probably not going to be playing something at 120 BPM. <laughs> right. You're going to go, you're going to go a lot slower. You want, you want to slow things down. Your mind grabs a hold of rhythm. Um, I even heard a, a guy, a Ted talk, a guy, I'm not saying everybody go home and do this, but you, you've seen the, 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 the thing about tapping where you, you could, if you tap your legs, over and over again at a certain speed. And then after a couple minutes, slow that down, you will relax very, very quickly because your mind grabs a hold of that rhythm because it likes to grab a hold of things that can predict. And so you slow that rhythm down and at some point you are going to help relax your body. I don't think that's the main way you should learn how to relax, but that can be one helpful tool. It just means there's such power in rhythm, rhythm. Your brain uh, is, is, tr is trained by rhythm for wow. sure. Well, all I know is I do my little experiments and, and we were, and we had, I can't remember what CD. Oh, I didn't have any CD. I forgot to put on it one of the CDs. And, um, and the older kids, uh, I have the, like the, you know, early, early elementary preschool stacking blocks. And there uh -huh. were like four different shapes and you stack them from shortest to, to tallest. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, just to, you know, move things along and get the kids in, in, you know, engaged and making everything a game and fun, I would set a timer and see how fast they could do it. Well, there's one kid, and I think, you know, Sid, oh, it took him like two minutes to, to stack all of these blocks. I put on the music for productivity, which is 70, 130. And he did that in less than 30 seconds. But the whole the whole learning center just like stopped in awe and the kids spontaneously clapped for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there, there's, there's, there's power there. There's, um, and I'm gonna show you, um, let's see, let's see. Um, so even though you'd have to go on eBay to find these things, I think uh, you and Hemda, um, like these, the, the music that they picked from are, are common, are not common, but things that you could find. Yeah. Vivaldi, Bach, you know, so, they, so they've kind of done the homework for you uh, to uh, find, and I'll put this in, I'll, um, I'll, I'll put pictures of this in the Facebook group so that you guys can, can look at it and, and do it. Um, oh, and I did want to say one more thing. The, um, for those of you that are not, uh, you know, can't spontaneously come up with, with uh, little songs and, and throw the words in there, you know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of songs that are already out there. Anything that, that, ca that you know, catches your attention, um, then, uh, you know, change the words to put in, you know, whatever you're, you're trying to get your child to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So there's, that's it. I'll drop these in. Um, uh, relaxation and inspiration. Those, those, everybody starts falling asleep in my room. So <laughs> I have to do the motivation and the, um, yeah, the other, the other ones. Um, oh, so now I want to, um, go to Hamda and ask her again after that long introduction. Um, so I, when I was, so you loved my analogy about laying down the tracks and the memory. Coming from your music background, at, you know, you've got a master's, what did that mean? Like, why was that so exciting? Well, I, I think I'm like you. I used to talk a lot about neural pathways and the railroad tracks is just a wonderful physical visual, you know, whereas neural pathways, when you talk about it with kids, and it kind of helps, but the, the railroad tracks is such a great visual. And then if you lay them down correctly, the train can just go. And that's the whole point when I'm teaching is that when we're working on technique and the kids are struggling with technique, I say, hey, it's not going to always be that way. We just need to get to the point where it becomes natural. And then you're going to have that that neural pathway. Now I'm going to say railroad track laid, and you're just going to get on it and go. And it's going to be easy. And you're going to be able to really express from the deepest parts of yourself that you want to do instead of 
having to work on the, all the nitty gritty, you know, of the of the muscle memory and the the technique. So I just love that image and uh, absolutely using that from now on. I think for kids, there there has to be even the young kids. I mean, the young kids are easier because they they it hasn't been programmed out of them that school isn't fun. And a lot of your kindergarten and your preschool teachers do use a lot of music and a lot of motion. And so um, I, I think it, it's easier at that, that age um, to motivate them and just to be a part, they just wanna be a part of the group and they just wanna have fun. And then you know, the older they get, then they kind of need a reason why. And it's super hard for me to lay those tracks if it's not attached to a grade and not attached to them memorizing something for a test. And so I think that, you know, that, like you said, that visual is like, okay, but before, you know, the, all your, all the stuff in your memory is kind of stuck in the junk drawer and you can't pull it out in time or fast enough to, to do good on this test. So we need to lay down the, these tracks so that the information, you can receive it and you can express it at a faster speed. Yes, exactly. And I love how you said, you know, like with the younger kids, they'll, they'll, they're used to moving. And I do a lot of movements off the bench. I, I teach piano and I do a lot of movements where I have to take the kids off the bench to help speed up the process of developing those neural pathways or now railroad tracks. And my younger kids just get off the bench so much faster and just get right into the movement. Whereas my older ones are kind of look at me skeptical and go, why are we doing this? You know, <laughs> and then I have to explain the logic of it and then they get into it. Yeah, when I um, when I wrote my book, I I, I um, did like this focus group, and I wanted moms of five kids or more um, that really lived life and didn't have a lot of time, and I wanted them to be able to pick it up and just do it. And um, and they wanted the you know they wanted more organization, so we put it you know into clearer chapters. Um, they put the names of the of the chapters, and then the one mom said. I need a reason why we're doing this because, because my husband's not going to explain, understand why crawling is going to help them, <laughs> you know, crawling is going to help them read. <laughs> like, and so then at the beginning of every chapter, I give them the why, you know, and then, and I think um, Luann, um, I think Luann did this. I'm going to, if you uh, want to share for us uh, a minute, Luann, that you took your granddaughter through the, um, through uh, the the keys, I'm gonna unmute you. Let's see. We'll give her a couple seconds if she's not comfortable unmuting. I think and, I did. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I did take her through it, but it's been a few years ago. But I was surprised at how quickly she was learning everything. And she was really excited as she'd get each key. Good, good, yay, thank you for sharing. Um, and, and so I, what I did is I took those tracks that need to be laid um, for success in the, in the classroom, especially preschool kindergartner, and, I, and they earned a key you know, every time they could do those skills. And what I found you know, in my, because a lot of times I would work with the family and then I would get called back to work with the younger ones. And the younger ones would come to the door and greet me and like stand on one foot. Like see, like they were paying attention when, <laughs> when they were too little to be paying attention. And they, they were working on those things because they, it was part of their family experience. And, and one little boy is just like, okay, okay, okay. You're, you, you sit here and I sit here and, uh, and then you say this, like he had the, our, my whole routine, which I thought I was a spontaneous person, but he, he had my whole routine memorized. And what's funny, Daniel, is they, um, they had like one of those um, jump frog things with the letters and the sounds and with a oh. magnet and you put it up to the, you know, it was on their refrigerator. And so you put the letter up and it says the sound of the letter but it doesn't have all the phonograms, which is really a hard way to teach children to yeah. read if all of their primer readers don't have short vowels. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and so um, the oldest daughter who who was who was autistic and uh, and dyslexic, 
uh, but overcame and was reading and, and writing above grade level, she immediately, when I worked with her little brother, went to the refrigerator and ripped the, the mess. She's like, this is a lie. And she threw it in the trash. <laughs> she knew all of her phonograms and she knew that that's what she needed to, to, yeah. to love. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see now. In I I don't know if Connie's going to be um, uh, here every day, and Connie does um, cake decorating and cake art, and and in the vein of um, fun. And one of my students made up the word funness. <laughs> it's time for funness. Um, kind of talk about some of your experiences and. Um, and the joy of, you know, you building a cake, you decorating a cake with someone else, just the, all of the motion, all of the joy, um, and, and what an impact that makes in relationships. Let's see if I can unmute you. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hey. Hi. So um, it's good to see you, Karen. You're looking very well today. Thank um, you. So man, you hit it. It's a lot of funness. <laughs> baking and decorating <laughs> cakes. It's a lot of fun. It's also a stress reliever. And um, in decorating cakes, people are very, you know, they're interested in seeing how it all comes together. So um, some instances, I'm sitting here and I'm coaching people and I'm decorating and they're just you know, sidetracked about what they came to talk to me about. They're distracted by me decorating the cake. So in that, <laughs> in that alone, you know, I'm creating relationships because now they want to order cakes. They want to taste the cakes. They want to see how I decorate the cakes. I have mothers asking me to teach children to decorate cakes, but three-year-olds nonetheless. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I have the patience for that. <laughs> So that's definitely one of the things that I'm looking into as far as like building relationships and stuff to try to uh, start teaching three-year-olds to decorate. Well, and you have a cake decorating uh, business. Yeah, it's still roughly getting off the ground. Yeah, still haven't decided if I want to go at it full, full force yet, but I've started all the, um, you know, everything got it registered and you know, I've gotten it started, but still debating on if I want to just, you know, how far I want to go with it. But here you have, whether you, whether you monetize it, whether you take your gift and, and as an entrepreneur or just use it to, to, you know, to uh, bring joy to the people around you, bring yeah. joy to the bride and the groom, bring joy yes. to, you know, as someone's birthday and make them feel special and, and make them feel, you know, wanted and seen and heard. Yeah. Um, Either way, it, however, you know, that works out in the wash. Um, what if, what if, you know, even that three-year-old or in someone that you're doing, what if that sparks that create, you know, I think creativity is catchy. Yeah. I think when you're with someone that's creative and, and non-judgmental, like you're seen and heard and, and just loved for who you are. Yeah. It's sparks creativity in them and it um and it kind of releases them into absolutely that. i you agree know, so it could ripple on and, and maybe you're you're going to a coach and, and mentor a future you know uh, uh cake decorator or or maybe they do you know something else i remember i was um doing educational therapy for uh, a group of kids and they're single moms, their, their moms were single moms. And so, um, and I had learned that the single moms drop their kids off early and, and pick them up late. And so I'm like, mm. okay, this year, I'm just gonna take them all in. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it'll be at my house. And so we did, we did all kinds of trips and field trips and, and, and activities. Well, one of the things that we did was we did our own um, contests like mm. a cake decorating contest, um, of their favorite yeah. dish contest. Well. Who would have thought I was just having fun? They yeah. Were having fun. Well, the the girl now has graduated and is going into um that's her thing. Oh Desserts. good. Yeah. So you don't yeah. know. You don't yeah. know when you're having fun and you're just living life with people, the things that you say and do that um that are releasing them into their into their gifts. Yeah. 
Yeah, you just gave me a really good idea. And I don't know, I don't know who else it brings joy to, but I know it definitely brings joy to me when I'm baking them. So, <laughs> and just, uh, I see the little kids when they see the cake, you know, my little, my nephew, he's up here often when I'm baking and he's like, well, what are you making today, TT? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'll show him the picture. And he said, okay. So when I'm baking, he's like, can I taste it? And I'm like, yeah. So he see all the colors and he's just so excited. I see the glow in their eyes. So I know is bringing them just as much joy as it's bringing me. But yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I think that, you know, I've been thinking about that, doing like the, um, bringing them to my home or just finding a space to, you know, bring four or five children in to be able to do that. Well, and, and one of the things that, that I teach and, and train is, is returning to joy. And we're going to talk a lot about that um, tomorrow. But the, um, the, those things. So if you have a really loving, fun, creative time, you know, with that cake. Yeah. And a lot of times you have music on. Yeah. Or, you know, and then you get into mm-hmm. a rhythm and, mm-hmm. and then you get into a position like a child coming home from school that's had a bad day and has a test and, and, and they can't oh, yeah. shut down. It's like just the smell of that mm-hmm. cake. You know, mm-hmm. just the fact that you see them, you hear them and, and be, giving them a chance to, to return to joy. Yeah. And if it's with a smell, if it's with, a, like we talked about the, this whole time, a song. Yes. You know, yes. I, and just build and like what Daniel was saying was building those memories, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and that, that time. And I think even if it's not related to cake or cookie or whatever, if you couple up a hard subject or a hard concept yeah. or something that's hard to, to memorize and you, you couple it with music, you couple it with uh, something tasty, you couple yeah. it with motion, you know, then, then it, there's a better chance that it's gonna get organized in their, their memory and they're gonna be able to pull it out faster because it's in that love and it's in that joy yeah. and it, and it's not getting, I have a, a video that I'll, I'll put up in our Facebook group. Uh, you know, like when the, the brain is stressed, they drew a picture of it just being squeezed and nothing can get in when there's, when there's stress. Mm. And, um, but joy releases, releases that, that. Mm-hmm. and it, it, it embeds things into the memory and, and, and who cares if they're trying to, you know, memorize the, the order of the planets you yeah. know, if they sing the song or if you happen to make some cookies and you, you, you know, you name the cookies or even put an initial on the cookies and you put yeah. the cookies in order, you know, just being creative yeah. and, and having fun and, and having no limits. Yes. You know, and what brings you joy as a mom and as a teacher, the kids catch that. It yeah. brings them joy and they, and so even if it's not related, you know, it'll it'll stick in their memory because they're you're they're spending time with you and they'll remember that that time with you my my dad was a um a really good coach I was a competitive water skier and um and I kept dipping my shoulder down which would make me fall on my face and this trick that I needed to qualify for the regionals and um and there was an air conditioner in the hotel room that we were in and my dad would tell me look at the look at the air conditioner and we would joke about it and whatever and sure enough I'm out on the water he'd he'd yell look at the air conditioner Mm. and I would keep my because it it got into my motor memory Mm. yeah and it was fun and it was time with my dad you know and um and then uh the you know then even in the tournament even under pressure I was able to to do the trick when my dad yelled, look at the air conditioner. The air conditioner. Yeah. Not, I mean, that made no sense to anybody else. Yeah. Except for me and him. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm sorry I, lo- I talked too long. Well, it, it's time. It is 7.59. Um, I, did anybody have like a really pressing um, question? You want to raise your hand? Or is it every or a comment. Oh, Daniel's back. Does anybody have a question for Daniel? (laughs) All right, so we are at at time. I'm gonna um, 
ask you guys to all unmute and say something loving and kind to the group. And I, we will see you um, tomorrow at, at seven o'clock. We're gonna talk about going from meltdown um, to joy. And Hemda is going to um, give us just some more. Um, well, just give us a little snip, of, a little preview of what you're going to talk about tomorrow, Hemda. Well, I'm going to talk about the music's effects on the brain and the development of memory and just how it, music lights up so many areas of the brain. And also how I use um, movements that are off the bench, off the piano bench to help stimulate uh, new railroad tracks in the brain. <laughs> and really speed up the process that music does for the brain. Yay! I'm also gonna talk about brain waves too. I've got a picture of uh, the brain and actual brain waves when listening to music. So that's really interesting. Yeah. All right, well, I say this to everybody. I love you guys. I bless you. I thank God for you. Um, and I will see you tomorrow at, at seven o'clock. Sounds Bye. good. Have a Bye. wonderful Bye. evening. Bye. 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 Right. Stop recording. And I'm.